So uh, the next step is to add the lining. And uh, what I'm doing here is I simply folded up very gently the, the, the satin and its muslin backing. And, and I'm going to put it aside just for a few minutes while I iron this, the lining. Um, you want to iron the lining so, so that you get, have no wrinkles in it. Um, I'm using, um, I'm using a cordless iron here, which is not the best iron to use for this kind of job. Uh, cordless iron, this particular cordless iron anyway, uh, you have to put it back on its base every, every minute or so, so it reheats. Um, if you don't, it cools down too much and will drip water if it's on like I have it on set on a low steam setting so that it will take out all of these these um folded um these folds and and creases uh but every, you can only iron it iron for about a minute or so and then you have to put it back for another minute or so and it's very it's a slower much slower process it's not ideal let's see see how it drip, dripped water there it wasn't heated up enough and so this is not an ideal iron to use for this i and i will not be using this iron i'm going to switch out for for another a regular iron um this one i i recently got and i thought the cordless idea was a nice thing but it's not working all right, so now that I have the lining uh, ironed, I'm going to take my my t pieces of my piece of satin, which is now backed, and lay it on here. Now, this is the same method that's used with all in my other videos for adding lining. You, the lining goes the seam allowance goes on the lining. If I were putting interlining under this, not just the backing for the satin, but an interlining, you would put it on the interlining and cut it out and pin them together just so that you have one piece just like that white, um, the white satin piece there. So the pins that are in, in the uh, white satin piece that are, even though it's glued to the lining, I did put... Um, pins to keep it in place. And what all I'm doing is going around and taking those pins and moving them through all three layers. Um, just pinning it into the table through all three layers. And then I'm going to cut out around the edge. Um, but I'm not cutting out at the edge of the white. I'm leaving a seam allowance. Remember, the seam allowance goes on the lining. Ultimately, the seam allowance will be a quarter of an inch wide, so I need at least a half an inch. I prefer an inch, three quarters to an inch, and and I can you can eyeball that. You don't have to measure it. Just leave yourself plenty of room as you go around it, so that you have about um, you know about an inch away. It doesn't have to be exact because once you finish doing it, it will be exactly a quarter of an inch. Uh, but that's that's because of the steam seam. Uh, so you can make it as wide as you want here. You don't want it as narrow, but you can make it as wide as you want. You could put two inches on it. So if some places are wider than others, it won't matter, as long as it's generally at least a half an inch or wider. And I can eyeball that. If you want to chalk a line, chalk a line. But I will just go all the way around. Now... Um, this is a shoulder seam vestment. So when I get up to the shoulders, I don't need seam, the seam allowance on the shoulder piece. It's already on the, uh, it's already in, in the pattern. So I'm cutting straight across right at the edge on the shoulder. However, the neck, I do need seam allowance. So when I get back here to the neck, I'm going to come back out about an inch and put the seam allowance around the neck edge. Uh, 
And if you forgot this, you could, if you were doing right sides together, turn inside out, you would you would cut the the satin the exact same width as, the, uh, excuse me, the lining the exact same width as the satin. And then just sew them together and turn them inside out after you've clipped your curves, uh, which is basically what we're going to do with the accessory pieces. But I don't like, I like to do um, it this method for at least the chasuble sections. So now everything's cut. And I'm just going to take away the extra lining. And I'm going to attach this piece to the lining. Um, I'm going to turn it on the table though. So now what I'm doing is picking the pins out of the table and putting them through all three layers, releasing, releasing it from the table, but still keeping everything pinned together. So I'll have to go all the way around and pin everything. And I didn't cut anything out of this video and it runs about a half an hour long. So that's about as long as it takes, took me to line this, um, this piece, this one piece. And this is the, one of the biggest, this is the, the biggest piece. The front is almost as big. So once I get all the pins moved in th so that all the layers are pinned together, then I can move the, the piece around. And I'm going to turn it on the table to make it easier for me to work with. I want to be able to access um, all three sides. Now I'm putting a ruler here just to show you the part that I'm going to, to um, put together. I'm only going to do the bottom section. I am not going to do the top because of the shoulder seam connection. I'm not going to do that last 12 inches on both sides and I'm not going to do the neck. I will do those once I have sewn both pieces together, but just because it's easier and the pieces will lay better and connect better. If I at least get the lining most of the way done, I'm going to go ahead and line, um, connect the lining for to at the bottom of both sections, front and back. So I'm turning it on the table so that I have access to the bottom, the the lower sides, which is where I'm going to be putting the steam seam. And I've got the other iron, hooking up the other iron. And by I'll put the steam seam down, and by the time that's down, it will be hot enough for me to press it. Again, this is the way I do almost all my linings. So I like, I'm right-handed, so I like to start on this side. I have to put water, I'm putting water in the iron and putting a chair there to sit on because I do, can't stand for very long. So I'd like to, I like to be able to work around the sides of the, the table with chair on each side and just move from chair to chair. Right, so. Cordless is nice because I'm limited by the length of this cord unless I get an extension cord. Uh, my old iron, the blue one that I used before, which began leaking and I had to replace it, had a much longer cord. I didn't have that problem. Okay, so. Filled up the iron. Put it to heat. Make sure it's set on the lowest steam setting. Make sure that's set to steam. All right, and now I'll just put it aside. 
uh, and let it heat up. And so I'm going to take the, uh, this is steam a seam quarter inch. And you'll see me throwing things on the floor. Um, this floor is is um, vinyl, and it's easier to drop it on the floor and just sweep it all up into a pile into the wastebasket afterwards. Then get up and go around and find the wastebasket. So I'm starting... Um, I'm debating right there whether I should put the steam seam up in this section. I'm not going to do, but I decided I'm just going to start at the section that I plan to do. Starting there, and, and steam seam is tacky, so it will stick down. And I'm putting it right at the edge of the satin. And when I get to a place that needs to turn, I'll tear this tear the steam seam. And I'm going to hit it with the iron to glue it down. And then, and then move along to the next. There was some dirt on the iron that got onto, it was, it was like dust or something. I just, it didn't stain the satin or anything. It just was kind of gritty stuff that fell off the iron. Probably because it has been used for a while and it came out with the steam. What do they call that? Uh, lime buildup or something inside. All right, so now I'm going to move down to the bottom section. Again, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm going to put the steam seam right around the edge of the satin and tear it off whenever it makes a, a sharp curve and then go to the next section. And it, uh, again, I'm just finger pressing it down, and then I will go over it with the iron. So, it's caught on my other chair. Now I'm going to put the ruler to, to show myself where I want to stop, kind of remind myself where I want to stop uh, so I don't go past that point. And 
and now I have the steam the seam all the way around almost three all the way around except um, the last foot on both sides and the shoulders and the neck so the next thing is to peel the paper off the steam seam fold the lining up now this is the same thing I've done in in my other vid videos on lining but um, it's exactly the same uh, so I'm peeling the paper and I'm folding the lining right up to the edge of the satin and because of the glue and because of the backing it's easy to find that edge of that satin and just finger pressing it down if there's any little um, puckers or gathers in it because uh, that's nothing to worry about. It'll be flat on the back and this will be covered by um, trim. So going all the way down. Now at the corner down here, I need to cut. I'm getting scissors now because I need to trim. Uh, I need to cut my curves. So here at the very bottom, I'm going to cut about three lines now you don't cut all the way up to the set and you're going to leave a stop about an eighth of an inch. I'm just cutting the gold lining to about an eighth of an inch from the satin. If you cut all the way up, you would make a hole. So stop about an eighth of an inch away from the satin and there's about three, about three places on that corner, maybe four. So I, that was one. Here's the second one. And there's a third one. And a fourth one. So about four times at that curve. And I'll do the same with the other curve. And then I, I'm, again, folding the gold up to the, to the satin. Now there's places where the gold will overlap itself because it is a curve. But not to worry about that. Oh, this is going to get taken care of. So I just finger pressing it and do the same with the bottom edge. I'm going to fold up. Finger press. And then cut the other curves on the other side. Now at this point, I'll probably go back and press this. Yes. So I'm going to go, to, go back to the top where I started and just touching the edge, the steam -a seam part, uh, I don't really need to press the whole thing because I'm going to cut the excess off and go all the way around the edge again, hitting the steam seam that is at the edge in between those layers and basically gluing the lining to the satin, but on the top. So now I'm at this corner, I'll cut, I'll cut this curve. Again, about four cuts, stopping an eighth of an inch away. And where the top is, I will also cut in where I stop at the top, that foot down, I'll cut the lining in, but again, stop about an eighth of an inch away. Uh, 
Okay, so now it's all, that's done. And I'm going to take my applique scissors. Again, you can use any kind of scissors, but I like these duckbill applique scissors because uh, you'll see how I use them. First of all, I'm going to cut this, the stopping edge here so that it won't, life won't curl up like that. It'll curl a little bit, but not much. And then um, holding holding the the lining up at a right angle to the to the satin, I'm just resting the scissors, the duckbill part of the scissors on the on the satin and cutting off all the excess. Everything that isn't glued down. You see what a nice edge that makes? It's about it's the width of the steam seam, about a quarter of an inch. It might be a little bit in some places, and I will go back and trim places where it's a little bit more wider than it should be. There's a place in there right there that I'll cut. And I'll go around and do this all the way around um, everything that I have. <coughs> everything that I have connected with the steam seam. Now it's still pinned and I'm not going to undo those pins yet. I wouldn't undo those pins until much until we actually have everything the front and back connected. So again you see uh, the knee, the scissors are flat on the satin. Uh, the duckbill part of it is protecting it from cutting anything but with the fabric that I'm holding up in the air. And yes, you can do this with any kind of scissors. It's just, these are so much easier. because they're made for this. So they're called applique scissors. The small pieces there at the corner I'm removing and now I'll just continue up the side. Until I reach that point where it's no longer glued and I'll cut it off. And this now is the next step, if this was not a shoulder seam applique, would be to would be to put the trim over that raw edge. But I'm going to have to connect the front and back before I do that because it will be a continuous thing. Now, you can see the back is nice and smooth. And all three layers are connected together. And as I say, I'm going to leave the pins in it. And I'll just gently fold this over. <clears throat> 